She's covered football, basketball, baseball, and hockey. One of America's most popular sportscasters was recently found uncovered in the privacy of her own hotel room. ESPN's Aaron Andrews' attorney promising he'll file lawsuits against those responsible for surreptitiously videotaping the broadcaster in her hotel. The suspects in this crime still out there. The five-minute video allegedly shows Andrews curling her hair and ironing her pants. Straight out to Kelly Zink, host at CelebTV.com, former sports anchor who knows. Aaron, what happened? Nancy, this, this case sickens all of us. Basically, we don't even know when this video was filmed. We were thinking maybe around the College World Series in Omaha, Nebraska. Erin Andrews, who had no idea she was being filmed, getting ready in her hotel room, and now all this video is all over the web. And what we have to remember is that Erin Andrews is one of these women who travels all over the country all the time, stopping in different places, covering so many different sports. So for someone to know where she was and when she would be getting ready several times, it's really suspicious. Now, it's my understanding, out to Sandra Golden, reporter with Comcast Sports Southeast. Uh, Sandra has been a sportscaster reporter for 16 years. She's a veteran. You've been in the same position many, many times. And what we're hearing is some freak, some perv, Ugh. is looking through the peephole. In fact, apparently, and I have not seen the video, you've got to go to a porn site if you want to see it. Then they shut it down and then it pops up somewhere else. Millions of people have seen it by now, most likely. She goes up to the peephole and looks at it like many of us do to see if it's working when we go into a hotel room. And the next thing you know, she's walking back and forth, fixing her hair in front of the mirror, doing all sorts of things, but naked. No idea there's a perv at the door. What do you think? I'm, I'm horribly disgusted. I haven't seen it either, but Nancy, the more and more I'm hearing about it, and I don't know whether this fish is growing or not, but I'm hearing that it was from an adjoined room in the hotel room and that it was actually a peephole. There was a camera set in it, so whoever was doing this knew she was coming and it's very easy to figure it all out we knew that Aaron Andrews has covered the College World Series if in fact it was in Omaha Nebraska they knew she was coming you can go on the internet right now it's June 13th through the 23rd Aaron Andrews covers it whatever hotel go to Omaha Nebraska you can find out the media hotel with about this much effort so you know whoever wanted to get it had preparation whoever worked at that hotel knew where she was staying and I would bet dollars to donuts Aaron already knows who exactly this was. Okay, Sandra, yeah. you said you believe or have learned that it may not be through the peephole. What did you say was the device used? Well, I heard it wasn't like, you know, the door hole, which I originally had heard, and again, I have not seen the video at all, but I heard it was originally through the peephole in the door, and I thought, how in the world can somebody get this video that actually scans up and down that doesn't make sense? So then later on today, I was uh, reading on the internet, and God knows if that's true or not, but they were saying it was an adjoining room, so somebody knew exactly what room Erin was going to, and they knew that where she, when she was going to be there, and they knew to drill this hole in the wall and put this scan in there. It's, it's creepy. Somebody went to a lot of effort to get this. So ladies, you're behind a locked door at a hotel and a reputable hotel chain and this can happen. I want to go out to John Mark, owner of Spy Tech Inc. sells video surveillance equipment. John Mark, I understand you've got some props on the set. Explain to me how this could happen with her not seeing it. Well, uh, if it was through the peephole, Fortunately or unfortunately, there is a device called a peephole reverser, okay? You can put it over the peephole and see into a room. Uh, it's sold sometimes to law enforcement and to process servicer, servicers to see if there indeed is somebody in the apartment. It's very difficult to hold a camera up to whoa, it. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. John Mark uh, with us, owner of Spy Tech Inc. Hold on. There are legal alarm bells going off in my head right now. Burris, don't go off on a tangent. Please stick, just keep it in the middle of the road, Burris. But in a room where law enforcement doesn't have a right to be with a warrant, how in the heck, let me say, can they use a peephole reverser? That doesn't sound constitutional. Burris. Oh, absolutely not. I mean, I'm shocked by hearing something like this. Of course, without you're a shocked. Warrant. I knew that. But how do you? How did? That, how can that happen? 
Well, it should not happen. I mean, you got to have exigent circumstances of some kind to justify that kind of activity, and even that doesn't make any sense. This, you also to have to have some kind of uh, a warrant from the court that allows for you to do it. It's very much like wiretapping, and so therefore you have to have okay. some kind of discussion from the so court, warrant order from the court. That's the ticket warrant. Agree, disagree, Gino Brogdon? Agree with that. I, I think it's so invasive that it would take courts uh, scrutiny to allow that to happen. Because if you're able to do that, you're able to put tape recorders in the room and and got it. And furthermore. Got it. So, Amos, very quickly to you, I doubt very seriously whoever was taping and videoing Erin Erin Andrews, the sportscaster, without her clothes on. I doubt they had a warrant. So, what kind of crime are they looking at? Well, they're looking at felony invasion of privacy. I, I looked at the laws in Connecticut and where she worked, in Georgia where she lived, and all of these states make it a felony to do what this person did. They're just going to have an extremely difficult time trying to figure out who it is did it. Out to Stake Sapiro. What do you believe happened? He is joining us. He's a morning show co-host, 790 The Zone. What do you think? You're seeing video from ESPN right now. Yeah, well, I mean, I've seen the video, and I probably speak for a lot of guys in a lot of offices that said this is uh, creepy, but then you all stand around, you check out the video because somebody had access to it. It's a criminal act going on. If you look at the video, it looks like some kind of a telescopic lens that's scanning up and down. She absolutely didn't know she was being filmed. She's absolutely, you know, uh, in the room, uh, naked, walking around, and somebody is filming her. So, it, it, you know, it's one step, uh, watching it is one step, I guess, uh, close to like you're watching a snuff film, because you know there's a criminal and a crime that's taking place. You just sit there and watch it, and somebody's going to get prosecuted. And I can tell you this, if uh, law enforcement wants to find out, this is not a tough case to crack. They will figure out who this is through the drywall of of a hotel room with a telescopic lens, somebody's going to figure out who this is. Okay, now you said that it actually scans up and down? Yeah, it's, well, uh, and everything I've read about it, it's a telescopic lens that moves around a little bit, which means somebody had access to move it around, and, and that's why they believe it didn't go through necessarily a keyhole or a peephole, but it was Got probably it. in an adjoining room. Thank you. With us, Take Shapiro, Morning Show co-host 790 The Zone. I want to go back to John Mark, owner of Spytech Inc., who sells video surveillance equipment. I cut you off earlier when you mentioned a peep hole reverser. Now that you're hearing the way the video looks, that it actually moves up and down her body, does that suggest to you the mode of surveillance? The mode of surveillance to me, therefore, uh, kind of represents that it is possible that somebody was next door. It doesn't have to be a telephoto or telescopic type lens. Uh, it, it was just a camera that was able to be manipulated slightly. Uh, what I heard was it went up and down. It kind of scanned her torso, unfortunately. And uh, the hole doesn't really need to be too big. Uh, for... Do you have one of those with you on set? Uh, yeah, we have uh, a number of them. Let me see what you've got. So okay. what's the smallest one you've got, John? Well, if you look at, if you look at uh, the, the lens on this, I don't know if you Hey, I need one of those not. to watch the nanny. R well, I like it. Keep well, going. There are other things to watch the nanny. And if these... Believe me, I've got it. The whole place is covered in nanny cams. Go ahead. Right. So you understand. This is a uh, very high-resolution digital video recorder. Uh, that has a 60 gigabyte hard drive in it. The camera gets attached to it. So whoever did it could actually watch on the DVR, the digital video recorder, what okay. was going on. That adds to the freak level that they're actually watching it while it's happening. Out to special guest Perry Aftab, internet privacy and security lawyer, wiredsafety.org. Perry, thank you for being with us. In a nutshell, remember, we're just a bunch of lawyers, Perry. How can you track down somebody that puts this on the Internet? Well, I'm more than just a lawyer. I run the world's largest Internet safety group. Uh, Perry, so I said we're just lawyers. Uh, you're the expert, so please repeat. In a nutshell, how can you track down this person? Well, uh, when it was posted online, if we can track back the first post, those sites collect the IP information. That's like the cyber breadcrumbs that will help you lead back to the computer that was used to post it. Although you can hide who you are, most of the time people don't. And with a subpoena from law enforcement or a private subpoena from, from lawyers, we can demand that uh, Daily Motion or YouTube or any of the other sites that have it provide the IP address of the people who posted it first. 
Then you go back to the device. Sometimes they'll collect Mac information, which is the computer that's used itself, and that will lead you to the old-fashioned proof. Tie it to whoever posted it online, might have done it at the time using a wireless access from the hotel, and you're going to get a lot more information. will help you figure out who on the ground was doing what they were doing. 